guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. If you are looking for a friendly, supportive vermicompost community, you are in the right place. Today, it's red wigglers in my tower system, and I want to talk about the myths or hard rules that a lot of people think exist for worm farming that are just, you know, not 100% right. So let's look at the top of the system here, which is the pre-harvest tray. So what we have in here is whatever is leftovers. So last time we did not feed this top row except for giving it a little bit of worm chow. And you can see here that the castings are super beautiful and fluffy. We just need to give them a little bit more time. I'm gonna collect up the food items here and bury them a little bit better here in the pre-harvest tray, just so that they have good contact with the moisture so the worms and their little buddies can get at it more readily. So this is still in sort of a uh, foraging mode. So we're not going to do anything with these guys here. We're just going to set them aside and look at the next layer down. All right, this is the next layer down where all of the feeding happened last time. And we fed broccoli slaw that had been previously frozen. You can see the top here is beautiful castings even have a little cocoon here that looks like it's pretty ripe. I'm not sure if you can see that, it's awfully tiny. But, um, so what we're gonna talk about today is basically some things that are just perpetuated by people just saying the same thing they heard from other people without any actual knowledge of having done it themselves with any sort of experience. And, you know, one of the, the big ones that I always get harangued about in the comments is citrus. Now, looking at the premise of these worbin legends or worm bin myths, tell me below what it is you've heard you absolutely should not do for your worm bins, and let me know if you can remember where you heard it from. All right, well, the first thing is that citrus is a death sentence for worms. And the reason behind this is that the peels of all citrus have something called limonene. I'm probably mispronouncing it, but lemonine, limonene, whatever you want to call it. And it is an irritant to worms. So that is in its existing phase. So brand new, fresh piece of citrus will have these compounds. But it's not just the worms that are working in here, right? So possibly it is an irritant. I've never seen worms shy away from any kind of citrus, whether it's fresh, frozen, or rotten. So I have no experience with worms being bothered by it at all. And my experience is what teaches me things. I read books as a guideline, but then, you know, honestly, I look at what else am I going to do with it? Am I going to drag my all my citrus out to my compost pile outside, which is about 100 feet away? Not in the middle of winter, I'm not. So I did experiment little by little with the worms that I had. And I thought, well, we'll, we'll just see what, you know, the worst thing happens. They'll stay away from it. They'll try and crawl away but they never did. So my experience tells me, at least if it's not the primary food source, I have never had problems with lemon or limes or any kind of grapefruit or oranges. Never had any problem in my bin. All right, let's look at the next layer down. So this has not been fed at all. This has only had the paper in it. And even still, it doesn't look that much different than the bin or the uh, layer on top, does it? No, I'm not seeing a whole lot of difference here. I'm seeing cocoons, not seeing a lot of uh, bonus critters here. I think last time we saw a lot of the um, springtails. I'm not seeing a ton of them, but I am seeing quite a bit of cocoons. It's springtime. The temperature in the basement is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, all of the little cocoons are waking up. You can see almost every worm that I pick up here has a swollen clitellum right here. And so they are in prime breeding mode. This is the good time of the year for them to just get rolling. All right, so this wasn't even a feeding um, level and yet it looks fabulous. Okay, let's look at the next level down. This is the one that is the second from the bottom. We did add moisture to this last time, 
and we're starting to see worms down here but I'm not oh well, there's still there's quite a few I'm probably seeing 20 or 30 worms in here um, yeah, that's one of those things when you start getting a lot of worm bins, you ask people like, hey, do you have any shredded paper or do you have any um, soup stock or whatever you want to get rid of that you could uh, donate to the wormery? And unfortunately, whoever donated this bag of paper shredded some uh, plastic. So that's going to be a long time picking that out. That's unfortunate but I would rather have my worms eat around it and I can pick it out later than to have it end up in a landfill or something. So I will suck it up and keep picking out the little pieces of plastic as I go. But this, this part is already looking good. You can see some worm castings in here. The worms, it's, it's not a perfect moisture for worms, but it is good enough for the levels they are not supposed to be in. All right, so the next Wurban legend that I wanted to talk about is onions. Now, the reason that I have found that people say that onions are a bad idea is because they are acidic. Now, if you've seen some of my older videos where I do pH all the food, apples actually are very low in pH. Actually, I guess it's high pH, but it's the number is low, is what I'm saying. Seven is neutral. Anything below seven is acidic. Anything above seven is caustic or alkaline. And believe it or not, when I tested the apples, the apples were equally acidic as tomatoes. And so I think that is kind of shot. I don't know if there's any other compound in onions that people think is bad, but it is certainly not the acid and it has not been my experience to have seen any sort of problems with onions. I often find that worms are cuddled up in the onions. Here's the very bottom layer. Let's see if I find any worms in here. Yep, there's one. Probably ought to stick him back up on top if he's gonna get anything to eat and be healthy. But this is down here and is kind of dry to sop up any sort of problems that excess moisture might have in the bin. Um, so it is meant to be a little bit drier here, but uh, probably not ideal for the worms. So then another thing, I'm gonna start reassembling here and then we're gonna feed these guys up. I actually, this is not just me experimenting and seeing if this is true. Uh, it is actually comes from textbooks. Often when I get into a hobby, I will actually go straight for textbooks like they teach, you know, in school for my information. And some of the people who do research on worms, you know, they say that the soil that worms are in, it's very common for the worms to be all the way to 4.5 and they are still fine which 4.5 is the pH of an apple just you know straight up when you're eating it when it's a fresh apple here's another cocoon very tiny from what I understand the size of the worm dictates the size of the cocoon so that must be a little one all right let me get these put up and we'll get the last two trays we can feed them up and get rolling all right, here is the feeding tray again and I'm gonna move some of the items off to the side here and uh, give them a really good feeding this time. I feel like I kind of skimped on them last time and considering I only get in here about every three or four weeks, probably shouldn't skimp. The last thing that people talk about the worms really not or should not be eating are things like hot peppers or grease and that is one of another thing that although people come up with these stories, but there's really no proof. Like this is tomatoes um, for me processing them. And one of the other things that's really not, and here's some stew, I think that is uh, maybe squash curry, I think. Anyway, there's oil in this. There's some avocado oil, coconut oil, that kind of thing in with that. And one of the things about fats meat, that kind of thing. The worm bin will eventually get to it and it does not hurt the worms, but it will invite other pest species to grow in number. And, and here's a little bit of egg. But that is one of the things that I 
I don't do very much because I know what will happen. It won't hurt the worms, it'll aggravate me because then I will get an increase in mites and springtails and all of the helper critters, although the worms will still be able to eat the food later. I don't like to see that many white mites. They uh, do kind of creep me out. So that's my reason for not having a bunch of meat or oil. I do it very sparingly. Uh, just because the secondary bugs show up and I don't like it. Even though the worm bins are in my basement, they're not on the main area with my house, I don't like to have random bugs flying around, etc. But I think the most important thing to remember here is that the worms are not by themselves, right? I just fixed that and I just messed it up because I'm playing with my worms. Dang it. So the important thing is that it's an ecosystem, right? And that Perhaps there is the lemonine and perhaps certain things are more acidic than others, but the important part is that they break down into other compounds, like when they rot. So if you look at oranges, if you ever get the one blue fuzzy one in the package of cuties, that's kind of a penicillin mold, and that is going to start breaking down all of that um, lemonine into something else that it will be digestible to your worms. So whether it is the microbes or the other critters, the worms will get to it eventually and it's not going to hurt them. So we're going to put a little bit of alfalfa powder up here. I ran out of worm trial. I'm going to have to get going on making another batch of that, but the alfalfa powder will do the same thing. I have links to all this stuff in the uh, pinned comment below as well as in the description for all the stuff that I use in my worm bin for Amazon. If you purchase through that link, it doesn't cost any more for you, but it does help out the channel and lets me provide you with more content. So, and then the last thing is hot peppers. And this one really kind of, I'm a pepper head, so I always have a lot of hot peppers around as well as the parts that I'm not going to eat. And capsaicin, it hurts mammals. It doesn't actually hurt other things. You've got birds that live off of peppers almost exclusively in South America, and they're not bothered one bit by it. The way that capsaicin burns you is by binding with your pain receptors, so it's not an actual chemical burn, and it will not hurt the worms. The worms don't feel capsaicin. In fact, I actually did an experiment that I can link above where I put ground apples on one side and ground peppers on the other. And the next time I came and looked at the bin, they were all over on the pepper side. And those were hot peppers. They left the apples alone and went to the peppers. That doesn't make any sense if these urban legends are true. So let me know in the comments below, what have you experienced your worms don't like or maybe have problems with? Well, if you like the video, go ahead and give me a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And also, if you want to watch more of the Red Wigglers, I have a playlist that I'll put right over there. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're going to like that video over there. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.